This is the penny lab where we're going to be determining the thickness of copper on a penny. I have two pennies here. Uh, one's an older penny and one's a newer penny. I'll put the older penny on our balance and the older penny has a mass of 3.01 grams. 3.10 grams for the older penny. And then I'll take our newer penny and I'll put our newer penny on the balance and I find that it has a mass of 2.44 grams. 2.44 grams for the newer penny. Why does the newer penny weigh so much less than the older penny? Well, older pennies were made up completely of copper. Here's an older penny that I've cut in half and you can see the copper in the center. And then here's a newer penny. The newer penny you can see is made up mostly of zinc and then it just has copper on the surface. So the older penny, entirely copper, the newer penny, mostly zinc, with just a thin coating of copper on the outside. We're going to be working with the newer penny today that just has the copper on the outside and zinc on the inside. I want to try to determine how thick the copper is on the outside of this penny. So the first thing we did was found the mass of the penny, and the newer penny had a mass of 2.44 grams. And we also need to find its dimensions. To do that, we're going to use these calipers. So these calipers will accurately measure the dimensions of the penny. Uh, we'll first measure the diameter of the penny and it's 19.04 millimeters. Uh, you can record that on your data table as 1.904 centimeters. 1.904 centimeters. Doing it in centimeters will make the calculations a little easier later on. We also want to measure the thickness. So the thickness of the penny 1.38 millimeters, 1.38 millimeters, or in centimeters, that would be 0 0.138 centimeters. So we have the dimensions of the penny. We have the mass of the penny. We now want to uh, dis dissolve the penny in nitric acid. So we're going to put our penny in a flask, and then we're going to add nitric acid. When I do this, I'm going to put the penny into the fume hood because the gas produced by the reaction of nitric acid and copper uh, we don't want to breathe in. We're going to put this in the fume hood. We would allow that to react overnight and after the penny completely dissolves it makes a solution that looks like this. It has a little bit of a blue color to it. Uh, the blue color comes from the copper ions. Copper ions when dissolved uh, in water produce a blue, kind of a bluish green solution. Um, we're going to use this color to determine what the molarity of this solution is, and then to determine how many moles of copper were in the penny. Uh, to do this, we're going to pre prepare some standard solutions. Um, first thing we want to do is intensify this color. We're going to intensify this color by adding a little bit of ammonium hydroxide. So we'll add ammonium hydroxide to our penny solution. This is not adding more copper to it, it's just intensifying the color. So we do that, and it turns this nice dark blue color. That's going to make finding its molarity a little bit easier. We're now going to dilute the volume to a total of 200 milliliters. So I'll just add water until we get to a total volume of 200 milliliters. So we have a penny dissolved in nitric acid. And then we added some ammonia to intensify the color. And we've diluted it to a total volume of 200 milliliters. Now we need to prepare our standard solutions. So our standard solutions are made by taking a copper solution that has a known molarity, 0.018 molar copper ion solution. It's right here. It has a nice dark blue color. And we're going to prepare a series of dilutions. Uh, when we dilute the solution, we can use the formula M1V1 equals M2V2 to figure out the new molarity of the solution. So I'm going to take a pipette, and I'm going to measure out 2 milliliters of our concentrated 0 0.018 molar copper solution, and I'm going to put it in our first test tube right here. And then I'm going to add 8 milliliters of water, so I'm diluting it to a total volume of 10 milliliters. So we add 8 milliliters of water, and we produce a diluted solution. You can calculate the uh, molarity of that new solution using this formula, M1V1 is equal to M2V2. So I've made a series of dilutions that you can see right here. And my series of diluted solutions, they started with just 2 milliliters of the copper solution. 
and uh, they go on up to 8 milliliters of the copper solution with 2 milliliters of water. They all have the same total volume. They always have a total volume of 10. And you can see that as the concentration increases, the color also intensifies. Well, what we want to do now is compare our penny solution to these standardized solutions. So I'm going to take a little bit of our penny solution and pour it in to a test tube. And now I'm going to compare the color of this test tube to the standardized solutions. So I can see that it's darker than our solution with the lowest concentration. And it's maybe not quite as dark as our solution with the highest concentration. So I'm looking back and forth to see which one it has the closest color to. The one it's closest in color to will also have the closest molarity. So it looks like this solution right here probably has the closest color. Uh, this solution right here was made with 6 milliliters of the standard solution and then adding 4 milliliters of water. So our penny solution has the same molarity as a solution with, made by adding 6 milliliters of 0 0.018 molar copper uh, to a total volume of 10 milliliters. We're going to calculate the molarity of this solution. The molarity of the copper solution is the same, or very close to it. We know that the total volume of the copper solution that we produced was 200 milliliters. When I diluted it, I diluted it to a total volume of 200 milliliters. Uh, so I can calculate the total number of moles in that solution and the total number of moles of copper that were in the original penny. Uh, using a little bit of geometry, you'll be able to calculate the thickness of copper plating on the surface of the penny.